Hello guys and welcome to Polyram. Today I'm gonna show you how you can create a stylized, twisted fantasy tree like the one you see right now. We begin by adding a cylinder and extruding it to get the base shape of the tree. Then by holding the ALT key we can select whole rows and press E to extrude the branches. At this point it doesn't really matter if the tree has bad topology because we're gonna retopologize it afterwards anyways. Now when you're happy with the rough shape of your tree you can press add modifier and choose the remesh modifier. When we now go to the wireframe mode we can see that there are a lot more vertices and the overlapping vertices have disappeared. If you want you can play with the voxel size but I just left it as it was and pressed apply all. If you can't see this button you have to add the modifier tools add-on in the preferences of Blender. Now we can go over to the sculpting tab and the first thing we're gonna do there is turn on the dynamic topology and set it to constant detail. I wasn't sure about the resolution at first but I ended up putting it to a 12. Now we still got these sharp edges on the tree and so we hold shift and go over it with any brush to smooth them out. Then we select the draw brush and start sculpting the surface of the tree. As you can see I'm turning around the tree while doing this to give it this twisted look. And at the bottom of the tree I'm using the snake hook brush to uh, make the roots of the tree. Now we get over to the finer detail and we use the crease brush to create these little ridges around the tree. This makes the tree already look way more defined. Now for the final step of the sculpting process, we select the scrape brush and go over the whole tree and create these flat surfaces and sharp edges um, which gives this really nice look. At the end to make the tree look older I use the grab brush to just make it more curved and twisted. The problem we now get is that the tree we just made has over 130,000 polygons which is just unusable for almost everything and so we duplicate it and name one of the trees um, tree LP for low poly and the other one tree HP for high poly. Then we select the low poly tree and just like before add a remesh modifier to it. I set my voxel size to 0.1 meters and the adaptivity to 0.5 meters. And then just like before apply the modifier. Sadly the remesh modifier isn't perfect and you might or probably have to go to the edit mode afterwards and fix some overlapping vertices. And you can also see that the topology isn't very pretty. The alternative to that would be to manually retopologize. This would give you a lot prettier topology but takes a lot of time and isn't that easy to learn. Now we get to unwrapping so we just press A in edit mode to select all the vertices and then U and smart UV project. When that's done just export both the low poly and the high poly model as an FBX. Now we can finally get to the texturing. So load in your low poly tree model into Substance Painter and press Bake Mesh Maps. Now this opens a window where we set the output size to 2048 and at the high definition model we select the high poly model we made earlier. At these two sliders we just increase the number very slightly and set the anti-aliasing to subsample 2 times 2 And then just hit the Bake Selected Textures button at the bottom. Now in the layers tab we create a folder and call it wood and we create a fill layer with a pretty high roughness like 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 and give it a dark brown color. Then we add a second fill layer and make a slightly darker brown color. Then we right click this layer and say add black mask and then right click that again and say add fill. Then we go down to the library and search for a grunge map that looks like wood and we drag and drop it into the window on the left. Now on the left we can adjust the scale and the rotation of the grunge map and I set the rotation to 90% so the stripes would go from the top to the bottom. Then we right click the fill layer again and say add filter and we add a blur directional filter. After that we make another fill layer and we use the color picker to select our brown and make it really bright. Then add a black mask and a generator and we add a curvature generator. Now we can see that that generator highlights our edges but um, it highlights way too much. So we set every slider on the left to zero except for the sharp and the fine. Now we want to add some dirt and for that we just add another fill layer and make it really really dark like almost black. And then we add a black mask and another generator. At the generators we add the dirt generator and we can already see that um, this generator puts dirt into our ridges and we're adjusting the sliders so that there's just a little bit of dirt in there. Now let's add some gradient and just like before another fill layer, a black mask and a generator and we add a position generator. 
Again, on the left we can adjust the sliders so that it's just a bit brighter on the top than on the bottom. But since we still want to see the curvature and the dirt, we set the fill layer to 50% opacity. Now let's add some moss, so let's make a new folder and put a green fill layer in there. Add a position generator and make it come from the bottom to the top. Finally, I got a nice trick that I learned from Styler Station. So we add another fill layer and just add a filter and we add the baked lighting stylist filter onto it. This looks weird at first, but we gotta set the fill layer to soft lighting and set the opacity to like 50%. This filter adds baked lighting and I think it just makes a huge difference. But with that the texturing of our tree is done and we can export the textures and go back to Blender. Now back in Blender we add a material onto the tree and connect the color to the color, the roughness to the roughness, but be careful you gotta set the roughness map to non-color. Then we put in the normal GL which we also put to non-color and plug it into a normal map node and that just into the normal. Finally, let's add some leaves, so we add a sphere and scale up and deform it a bit to make it look like this. Then we go to Photoshop and we create an image like this with leaves. And I'm using the exact same as for the last video, which I'd recommend you to watch if you want to learn how to make stylus plants using Blender. But now we import that image we just made into Blender, subdivide it a bunch of times and make it more rounded. And I also added some translucency to the image so light can shine through them. Finally, we add a particle system to the deformed spheres we just made and we activate advanced. Now we go to the render tab and set the render as to object and the instance object is our leaves. Then we increase the scale and the scale randomness and activate the rotation. Uh, we set the orientation to global Y and also randomize the rotation a bit. And when we're happy with the settings, we can hit make instance real. This will take a while to load and then we can shift select the tree and hit ctrl J to join them. And the last thing we do is delete the deformed spheres behind the leaves and then our tree is done. Thank you so much for sticking around till the very end of the video. I hope you could learn something and we see each other again pretty soon.